Hello, Growing Roots One students and caregivers. We're going to talk about how to use our home sheet for practice today. So we have uh, the dilemma of practicing all of these items in one week or in one session and just really getting tired because it's a lot of things. We have eight different items to practice. So how to practice everything just without getting really tired and, uh, and just getting frustrated with getting through everything every day. Well, I have some suggestions. First of all, if you're able to get every, through everything every day, that's really wonderful and you're going to be making a lot of progress. So please let me know if that's what you're doing because uh, we need to make sure that you're being challenged because you'll be doing really well in class. Now, if, um, if there are some things that need correction, I can help guide you as far as what to look for, whether it's posture or improving the sound. Uh, so, but we're gonna talk about how to practice the items on our home sheet. So I have a couple of solutions. One is to just go systematically, and that would be to go in order. So maybe day one of practice, you could go through the first item in the review songs and then first item of the review activities. And so let's see, let's take that as an example. I'm going to play Underwater City and then Monkey Song with Action. So we'll see how long that takes. So I'm going to uh, take Underwater City. I'm going to slow it down to uh, maybe 75%. And that might not be a bad idea. If you can get some sort of slow downing app to slow down the pieces, that would be really, they don't talk about doing that um, in Sprouts, but I use the amazing slow downer, which is ASD right there. I'm gonna be at 75%, and that way I can talk to you about the string crossings in this piece. The challenge of Underwater City is that you have a quick string crossing, and you wanna make sure that you're doing a quick string crossing at the end of each rhythm of each Mississippi stop, stop. So you'll, you'll go stop, stop, and rock. Stop and roll. Oops. Stop and rock. Stop and roll. Okay, so you're rolling and rocking back and forth. So now we're going to do the next item, monkey song with actions. Monkey song with actions. I'm a little monkey climbing up a ladder, climbing way up high to pick a pink banana. I'm a little monkey climbing down a ladder, climbing way down low to eat my pink banana. Probably 30 seconds on that. So, uh, what I would recommend also is that you go put a timer on, try to go for whatever age your child is, add a minute to each age of the child. So if your child is five, you would go five minutes for a practice session and then try for a second 
uh, practice session later on five minutes so that you have a total of 10 minutes of practice. You could take a container that has uh, the numbers one through four on each card and just pick one of the cards. So this one says item number four, and that would be doing stepping on the dance floor. And so you would review that. And then you could also add dice for just variety and fun in, in practicing. So if you roll the dice, that's how many times you would play it. So I came up with six. Six is a high number. Six is a very high number. In fact, if a student rolls anything above four, I would just have them work on the action of setting the fingers down and lifting that number of times and doing it really well. Another suggestion I have is just to work with your student in what they want to practice. So if they really like doing soaring on the skyline, then have them play that for the entire five minutes. Uh, you may want to stop them and ask them if, um, you know, they, if they're checking their best bow hold in between each or check for the mouse hole, which I'll demonstrate at the end. You could also, during one of the repetitions, do the distractor game or think of something to compliment them on each time they play. Uh, so uh, doing something over and over, especially if they like it, is really a smart way to practice. Finally, there's a little note at the bottom of the home sheet that says caregiver tip. It says try occasionally placing small items in the mouse hole to see if the mouse could slide through. So let me show you how that's done. So we have this problem with the left hand uh, constantly going like this, which leads to squeezing, which leads to pain and problems in the left hand. So whatever we can do to encourage that straight hand, because we'll be able to play up and down on the neck in different positions. So there's a little pretend idea of having a mouse that comes and lives between the neck and your palm, and you don't want to squish him and so you want to keep him from getting squished and then he has to have a breathing hole so that he can breathe and so you want to keep him alive while you're playing your pieces so that's how you want to encourage that straight wrist and keep the mouse alive